in the homesteading years up here, my grandparents came to know a lot of the Stonies. And one of the, uh, my grandmother's best friends was a Stony woman called Elizabeth Hunter. And her photograph appears in uh, the archives of what uh, they called the McDougall Orphanage, which was effectively a residential school. And in the back row, and it's in the big hill country, there's a picture of <clears throat> the, the headmaster and, and a bunch of the kids. And in the back row is a smaller looking girl whose name was Elizabeth. I think the Stonies called her Eliza. But uh, she and, and her husband, Judy Hunter, his name was Judas Hunter, but they called it Judy, used to come and go with the team and wagon quite a bit. And... Um, and uh, Elizabeth and my grandmother became fast friends to the, to the point where my grandmother was one of the few people, non-Stonies, that was ever invited to a, to a Stony Sundance. And the artist Marion Nickel was a friend of my grandparents, and she was here visiting for a period of time when the Sundance was to occur near Morley. And um, so they had a car, uh, the Nichols had a car, so Marion drove my grandmother to the site of this uh, Sundance, but was not allowed to attend. She had to stay in the car, but they, they invited my grandmother in, and she participated and sat through this Sundance thing uh, under the uh, promise that she wouldn't talk about it, and she never did. She never told her husband or anybody what went on at the Sundance, only that she had been to it. Uh, she talked about Noah Goat, was uh, another Stony who used to camp up here a lot. In the uh, in the late third, in the mid to late thirties, there was a sawmill up here operated by a guy called Rex Kendrew, and that's the sawmill that uh, my grandfather bartered with for lumber and whatnot. And my grandfather worked for him for a period of time, and they also supplied the beef for the mill. Now the mill wasn't really big; I can't remember how many people they had, but it had a steam engine that actually powered it. And there would be a, a few guys in the bush cutting logs and a few guys running the mill. So I don't know, I'm going to speculate, maybe 12 or 15 people worked there. So they didn't have to supply a lot of beef, but nevertheless, they had to supply beef. And it was bitterly cold one winter. My granddad was working on that at the mill. Um, the mill needed beef. They'd run out of beef. So my grandmother, he said to, to, to my grandmother, Jean, ride up the valley in the vicinity of her old homestead and bring home that fat, dry heifer that's up there so we can butcher it. Well, it turned out it was 40 below. And, uh, of course, the clothing wasn't as, as good then as, as it is now. But at any rate, she, she set off with a saddle horse through a foot and a half of snow up the valley, found this little bunch of cattle that were grazing on the bared-off hilltops where there was lots of uh, native grass for them, uh, cut out this uh, dry heifer, and proceeded to chase her home, which would not be an easy thing to do because cattle are herd animals and they don't like being separated from the herd. But she managed to get this thing lined out and going down the trail that she broke on the way in. And she damn near froze. She, she said she doesn't think she'd have made it. But she got down on the reserve just east of, of um, Rabbit Lake. And here in the middle of the trail was a bonfire. And it turned out that Old Noah Goat had seen her ride up and knew that she would be cold. And he went out and piled up a great big pile of dead willows and stuff and lit up a fire and then retreated to his own cabin, or his own tent, actually. And when she came along, uh, she says that that, um, that bonfire saved her life. So she huddled around it along with the horse and the cow and uh, got warmed up again and then made the last two or three miles back down to the ranch. Um, she talks about uh, uh, my grandmother was uh, asked to accompany some of the Stonies on, uh, in a singing competition so she could play the piano. So three or four of the uh, old Indians had come along and, and they rehearsed two or three times. Uh, and then they went to Morley to the competition and... Uh, and the, the, the fellows that she uh, accompanied uh, won the won the singing competition at Morley. So, you know, there was all, and they um, often hired, uh, as did my dad, hired uh, Stonies to 
help with the harvest or help with cutting uh, fence rails and fence posts and that kind of thing. So there was uh, quite a bit of uh, interaction uh, in those days and uh, much of it very rewarding. My grandmother tried to learn. She learned some stony. She learned the, uh, the numbers, 1 to 10, by uh, writing them out and then singing them to the tune of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And I have the, the words here somewhere uh, of, uh, of the stony uh, names. And, of course, this, this Valley Robinson Creek, it's called now. The Indians had a different name, uh, something Wapta. I think Wapta is water... Uh, it, uh, they called it uh, uh, water among the spruces or something like that. And uh, so, yeah, it, it was uh, it was an interesting uh, time then. There's still two Stony family live on the reserve north of us and drive through to get to their property, and uh, and they're good neighbors. <laughs>